The Sega 32X was overall a financial failure uh, if you just look at it historically. Um, Sega didn't really uh, do a great job of marketing the device or um, they just didn't really support it that much and there's all kinds of rumors going around about how Sega of America and Sega of Japan uh, you know saw this as the knife in the room when when they were fighting um, you know not to say that the that hardware wise it was a failure or anything like that it actually functions fairly well but you know they kind of shot Sega shot themselves in the foot uh, when they released the 32x and um, you know just kind of ignored it and immediately went on to the Sega Saturn um, and a lot of people didn't really like the idea of spending so much money on this device and then only to buy a new system you know if they were going to stick with Sega uh, you know in a very short period of time so <clears throat> with all that said this is actually my favorite Sega, uh, Sega 32X games um, they're not presented in any particular order but you know there are some good games on the Sega 32X so, uh, Star Wars Arcade was released in 1993 by LucasArts. Uh, this is mainly just a, a faithful recreation of the arcade game that used the line Vetrix and stuff like that, um, you know. And uh, I really enjoyed that sit-down arcade game quite a bit. So to have the game, you know, pretty much remastered and in full color and in good graphics and on a home console was very exciting for me. Um, I you know, I picked up all my 32x stuff for fairly cheap because uh, it was you know I basically picked it up when the PlayStation was out, so you know it was easy to pick up. Uh, I think the 32x cost me ten dollars, and most of these games only cost me two dollars a piece because um, no one was interested in the unit. Uh, the next game is Shadow Squadron, 1995 by Sega. This is one of the shmups in the series that is just really well done. I was very much blown away by, you know, how much how much fun I had with this game. Uh, you know, everything felt good and tight. It didn't feel very drifty, where you know your your ship would keep drifting after you, you were done pressing that directional button or anything like that. You know, it is just really well put together. Um, I have a feeling that this game was, uh, you know, intended to compete with Star Fox, uh, but it just had no brand recognition whatsoever. Uh, next up is Knuckles Chaotix. Uh, I know this game gets a lot of flack because a lot of people don't like the mechanics. I actually enjoy the mechanics of this game, where you do the the rubber banding and stuff like that. And, you know, use your partner to get into certain areas and things, and it's it felt like there was more strategy to a Sonic game than you would normally expect. Uh, it was released in 1995 by Sega, and it's a good game, and I, I think people should you know try to give it a second chance. Next up, we have Afterburner, 1995, again by Sega. Uh, Afterburner is just basically a staple in pretty much every Sega console. Um, you, you should have it, you should play it. Um, <clears throat> you know, if you own a Sega co console, you should have an Afterburner on that console. Um, you know, Afterburner is just you know, a great arcade shoot, you know, flight sim shooter. It's not really a flight sim, but it's you know, from behind the plane shooter. and. You know, I just remember the arcade big machine where it was, where it would articulate and move around and all this other stuff and you'd elevate. And it, it felt more like you were in the plane, and I loved that. And you know, Afterburner for the 32X was, you know, a very faithful cartridge-based port of the Afterburner series. Well, that's it for this episode of Monday Designs. I'm your host, Monday. Thank you.